My name is uh, Ilona Švihlíková and uh, I'm the founder and leader of the civic organization Alternativa Zdola. And uh, well, currently we are at our headquarters. This period is uh, connected with my childhood because in uh, 84 I was seven years old. Uh, so I went uh, to the basic school, so my memories are connected um, with this time. Uh, what uh, I remember uh, particularly is uh, the difference of what could be spoken or could have been spoken publicly and uh, the difference that man that one spoke at home. So that there was a difference uh, I remember, although I was very young, that uh, my parents, uh, especially my mom, told me that there are things that we speak about uh, politics at home, but I was not allowed to say so at school. So that's maybe a political life <laughs> from an early age, uh, that I remember. And otherwise, uh, my, my childhood was very happy. I remember at the time we started uh, for, for the summer holiday uh, to go to the Czech Highlands, uh, to the town of Pelzimov. And personally, it was one of the most, um, one of the happiest periods of my life. So that's maybe one or two, three things that uh, I remember best from this time. Well, of course, I'm in, very, in a very different position because I'm not a child anymore and I view it not only as an adult person, but as also as someone who is quite active in the public matters, as an economist, so that definitely shaped uh, my interest. Um, what I view mostly is, of course, uh, the coming 25th anniversary of uh, the so-called Velvet Revolution. And what you definitely perceive is the, the degree of disillusion that is among people. So these 25 years, really many opportunities were simply not used or at least not used in the positive way. So, so there's definitely a disillusion. I think that when we speak totally currently, uh, there is increasing fear increasing fear that there may be a war, a big war, uh, of course uh, with the tension between, uh, let's say, the Western world and, and Russia especially. So that's definitely something that you perceive uh, in, a, in a daily contact. Well, and then there are like, like personal things that are important for me, like my organization and, and my job. Uh, I, I teach at, uh, at university, so of course these things matter as well. But publicly I would say that really this, this amount of disillusions plus this new, new fear of what will be coming. And it's not uh, in, in the way like black and white that everything was good and now it's bad or so, but they simply feel that much more could have been achieved and that maybe the path we are on, both uh, economically or geopolitically, it, it's not the right one. Of course, uh, in wealthy regions like Prague, uh, there may be more optimism, but uh, when you go to the countryside or to regions that have deep social problems, then of course the degree of dissatisfaction will grow immensely. But for the whole republic I definitely think it's more than 50% that have this, um, this perception. Well, uh, as I said, the 80s for me are uh, my childhood. So of course I perceived something from uh, the political level because uh, my parents, especially my mother, uh, were very interested in it. And uh, one of the earliest memories I have that my mother showed me a photograph of a reformer uh, in 68, Alexander Dubček. And she had the photo hidden, it was, it was hidden in a wardrobe and uh, she told me he was a very good man. And I shall remember that, but I uh, may not say so publicly, so it's only at home that I may talk about that. So, so that's uh, what I remember from the atmosphere. 
uh, that there was this, this difference. There was really something that that shaped my childhood. You know, to know that publicly there are things you mustn't say and you speak about them only at home. That's that's what I, uh, I remember clearly. But of course, uh, at school because we were children practically, so I went to the second grade. So there was of course no talk about that. We we, we, were, we had other worries, so to say. And and with my friends, uh, I remember we had um, some kind of um, girls group, and uh, I used to be the leader of it, and we did various things and sports and so. But uh, well, that's a very distant memory now. <laughs> it's it's a very long time ago. I remember my perception of it, of course. It's it's always subjective. Well, what I remember is that uh, the the relations between or among children at school were definitely not based on things. Like, you know, there was no comparison like what clothes are you wearing and what you have or don't have because we all had more or less the same. There were no, no, practically no differences. So there was not much talk about that. It was not important about other things, but definitely not like, uh, well, there were no mobile phones at that time, but it was not about fashion or something like that. So that didn't play any role. And I have, I have the feeling that people are somehow more stuck together because they, most of them, perceived the political situation similarly. They didn't speak publicly about it, so openly they didn't, but they perceived it in about the same way. And I, I think there was much more solidarity between people. There was not this, this competition. It was like a feeling that we are all on the same boat uh, and uh, somehow we want to go through this, this, this period that was definitely not that simple. Uh, but the, this rivalry and, and, and competition that came later, it was, it was simply not present, at least I don't remember it, don't remember it as a, as a child. Well, uh, I have, oh, I'm in a very different position than I was, of course, uh, because I would say I'm an active member. Uh, maybe you would call me an activist, even. Uh, I work at university in, in my field is economics, and I publish a lot on the topic, and I write articles uh, on what is not going so well, maybe, and what can be done better. And I'm also an active part of the civic uh, society with, uh, with Alternativa Zdola as uh, organization. And um, I also was active on many happenings and demonstrations. So uh, being active in issues like the Transatlantic Treaty, which is very current, for example, and, and many other issues like the promotion of cooperatives and, and solidarity networks and uh, citizens' participation. So there are many issues that uh, for me are important and I, I feel the need to, to fight for them. Currently, I would probably say that it's, it's activism combined with some kind of fight for, uh, for something better. And maybe the most dangerous thing is, is that many people that are in these disappointment feelings and disillusions, they turned to be very passive. And, and that's, that's a danger, I feel, for the, for the Czech society. And one of our aims is uh, simply to activate them, you know, to say that um, uh, politics will be there. If you care or not, it will influence your life. So it's better to care and, and be active and do something. Uh, of course, there was this uh, organization, uh, Pioneer, uh, uh, which, uh, well, included uh, young people that were interested in various things like nature for example which i was uh, and it doesn't exist anymore at least i think it doesn't exist anymore and maybe there was um, spartakiada which i remember that was a sports event where normal people um, exercised and there were um, thousands of them and now this event is heavily criticized as a part of the propaganda but as a child I loved it because it was so nice 
when uh, there were coordinated movements of thousands of people and, and it looked great simply on TV. I didn't take part because I was too small, but um, there was something that I liked. And I think that maybe now um, the young people, children, they don't know what it was actually. Um, I remember also the, the fairy tales that used to be broadcast uh, on a Sunday. And of course, now I probably <laughs> would watch it again, but at the time it was it was fantastic and it, and it built some kind of culture. Like when you when you talk uh, with people of my age, everybody knows what, what you talk about because we watch the same fairy tales and the same child programs and it's something we grow on with. And it, it was not this, this comics and Superman, this, we didn't know about that, maybe for the better. And it was simply a different, different culture. Yeah, so different values maybe a little bit as well. So I think that today's children probably wouldn't understand or maybe they would prob have problems to understand. And maybe one more, uh, one more last thing, uh, the understanding of Slovak language. Because we grew naturally in Czechoslovakian environment, so many programs on TV and so, but in Slovak and we understood normally because it was first, well, it was no foreign language first. But uh, now when I talk to my students, for example, they really have sometimes problem to understand the language because they haven't listened to it from an early age. So for them it is a foreign language and they sometimes really do have problems to understand what it's talk about. Whereas for me it's something absolutely natural, like we're talking Czech, there is no, no difference for me. So maybe that is the answer to your last question. What I remember, of course, were Sunday mornings with a, with a program for children and then later I remember that we regularly watched these, uh, these uh, Slovak programs that they were like dramatized books and so on. It was very interesting. Of course, I didn't understand everything as I was quite small, but still it just left something <laughs> in, in my memories. Uh, it can be that there were not many attractive movies and so, but um, uh, that's, that's something that was just blurred, you know. Uh, maybe it is done like that, that you remember uh, the, the positive things from the TV program. But I think there were two channels, I think. There were two channels and yeah, there, there definitely were some political programs, but uh, well, I don't think when I was eight or something like that, uh, that I follow it uh, very closely. <laughs>